Hi, my name is Roxanne Wilson and welcome to Rox Talks. I'm really excited to introduce the, our guest today. And we went a little off the rails because that happens when you've got some great conversation. Um, so I wanna let you know the topic was going to be all about target market, but it grew beyond that. And I think you're gonna love it. Um, we were talking to Jennifer N and she is a corporate girl who turned stay at home mom, homeschooling, a mom, she's a homeschooling mom of five and an MLM leader. Here's a little bit about her. After graduating with her MBA, she climbed the corporate ladder hard and fast to position of CFO, Chief Financial Officer of a mortgage firm in Chicago. Um, after literally being praised for all of her work on a Monday, she was let go on, a, on that very Wednesday. Little did she know that her husband was then going to lose his job and all that to say, and she'll tell you in, when you hear from her, she was eight months pregnant with their first child of five when that all went down. But here's what's so great. She shares her past experiences um, and how it directed her to the future. And what I love is that in this podcast, you're going to hear a lot of truth bombs. She's not going to get real with you and really give you a vision for three things that you need to work on for 2020, for network marketing in 2020. We're not talking about old school network marketing because we're not in that generation. This is how these things that are going to be a little counterculture, I'm going to tell you right now, are things that um, if you master, I'm convinced you are going to grow in magnitudes and multiply this year and beyond. So let's take a listen and dive right in. And when you do, please do me this favor. When you see if there's a part of it you love or you hate, that's fine too. Will you screenshot it and tag me and put it in your story? I will tag and shout you out as well too. All right. I'm so glad you're here. Let's take a listen. Jennifer Newen Schwander, welcome to the podcast. It's so good to have you here on Rock Stocks. Oh, it is so good to be here. I'm excited to be on the podcast. Of course, I'm a big fan, so I'm honored to be on it. Oh, well, uh, you, you know, mutual appreciation society. Um, before we dive into what I believe is a meaty topic that um, a lot of people are in denial about, we need to find out more about you. So tell us, how did you get into the, the network marketing realm? Absolutely. So kind of a little bit of a background on myself. Um, I was a former corporate girl. I climbed the corporate ladder hard and heavy, graduated with my MBA, working downtown Chicago, and I poured in to really climbing that business. And I found myself um, in a very high level position especially for my age. I was the CFO of a mortgage firm. Wow. And we were nationwide. We were not just in Chicago, but we were throughout the U.S. And I remember being praised for my position on a Monday. And on a Wednesday, there was a restructuring. And I found myself being let go wow. because of that situation. So here I was, I had really poured and, and gave everything into that. Not to mention that when I was let go from my position, I was eight months pregnant. So of course, no one in their right mind is going to hire you right. when you're eight months pregnant. Right. Not at all. So we said, okay, you know what? Let's wait until after the baby. Um, I had other firms that I had talked with and spoke with, but we really felt like, you know what, it's best to wait. Let's wait until after the baby and kind of see where things settle out. And what baby was this? Because you have five. Yes, um, I do have five. This was number one. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is the beginning of it all. Exactly. Just a little over a decade ago. I always say it's been a really busy decade. <laughs> In more ways than one. Um, so from little did I know that when I was let go from my position, it was about three weeks later, my husband, different company, different industry, all together was let go from his position. Stop it. It was like the floor had been ripped out from underneath us and... And we had just purchased right before I was let go. We had just purchased our forever home. Oh my gosh. It was like my world had been turned upside down and we were also going into a reset. 
So we went almost an entire year with zero income coming in. Wow. And so the, that year really, really stuck with me. And I never forgot it. <laughs> um, we climbed out of that. So grateful for that. But I remember one point in time in particular, um, one day where I was going into the third grocery store for that day. Not that I enjoyed grocery shopping. I actually hated it <laughs> because I hated seeing money going out, but it was the third grocery store because eggs were 20 cents cheaper there. Mm -hmm. And here I have a baby um, with me and I just remember bawling and just thinking, Lord, I don't know how much longer I can deal with this. I don't know how much longer I can mentally even <laughs> do this. And I don't know how much longer our savings will last. I mean, we have zero income, major purchases. Well, God is good. And we climbed out of that. And I'm so grateful for that. But that moment and knowing that your world can turn completely upside down when both of us were at the very, very top in our industries, in our companies, can be flipped in like a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so that was some kind of some moments that really stuck with me. How did you let that stick with you, but not live in a lack mindset, just out of curiosity? Yeah. You know, I think that part of it is one, you have to look at what, what is wrong, right? What is wrong with the situation? And I think it is okay to say, you know what, here are some things that really, really stink and I have no control over them and kind of be there for the moment, but then to say, okay, now how can I work around that? How can we climb out of this? And at the time when we were going through all of this, you know, just had this baby, do I want to go back to other firms? But I knew that those firms would ask a lot of me where there was zero, very, very little flexibility on my behalf. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it was just stair stepping and looking at how do we work around the obstacles that we can't change. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so you saw it as like a puzzle that you can solve, not a, I'm a victim or, or this could happen to me at any time. Absolutely. You accepted the things that you couldn't change and you're like, how can I get out of it? But you know, it's interesting because I think sometimes when you hit the pinnacle and then you lose it all and then you're, you're climbing out of that pinnacle, you still feel like you're down in that hole. And so it's hard to remember, wait, I have to behave like a person who is successful I have to believe that, that that situation is proof that I can get out of that hole in the first place. So I don't have to keep going to three or four grocery stores to get when I don't have to. There's times when we need to, but I don't have to because it, I, 20 cents doesn't matter to me anymore like it did before. Absolutely. It is. And it is, I think, so much of looking at, okay, what's the next step to climb? What's the next step to get to where I want to go? And knowing that it is, there are circumstances that you can't control, but ultimately you get to control what you do with the situations. And that's going to lead you to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. So at that point, you decide to do network marketing. You say, let yeah. me no more corporate world, world at all. You just dive into the network marketing. Right, right. And actually I did for, um, for a little piece in there, I did own a catering business, which oh. I loved and I had a lot of fun with, and I just really had a lot of fun with it. Um, and so did certain events as, um, as I scheduled them. But very quickly, I knew that I didn't want to pour a ton more time into building that mm -hmm. because of the time. Yeah, it happened. takes away. Being doing the wedding plan, I get it. Like it takes away and you really are at the, it's a great, it's great, but you're at the realm of others. So that's, so again, how'd you get to network marketing? <laughs> right. Well, it wasn't until years later. I mean, it was about 10 years later that network marketing kind of came into the picture. 
for, um, actually for my husband and I both. And we were with a company and um, ultimately we actually decided to leave that company. Um, network marketing, a lot of people don't realize this. This is truly like like building a business. And we knew that long-term we weren't going to be aligned there. And so we actually sold that business. Um, so you've been part of more than one, which I think is, is great to, that you made it an asset that is something that you could then sell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I didn't even envision really going into another network marketing company. Um, it wasn't what I was aligning myself with. I wasn't. However, I was smart enough to know that one, it is a true asset. It can truly be built. Um, and so that's why then when I decided to look at this, I kind of looked at this again with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times as women, we are afraid to talk about money, Ugh, like afraid to talk about money. And so one of the very first things that I did was I looked at the business structure. I looked at the compensation plan. <gasps> oh no. Mm -hmm. um, but I also looked at truly what does this business look like marketing it and long-term growth? Like, am I swimming in a blue ocean or a red ocean? I want to be swimming in a blue ocean, actually. Definitely, definitely. Um, red ocean means the shark's going to come get you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so that was really where I saw that this was something that could certainly be long-term. But for myself, this is very different than a lot of people. Um, I never, ever ever want um, my business to be our sole income ever. It should be one of many and you should think of it like an asset. So that's the CFO in you. Like the, the, you've used the word asset many times and I think that's definitely C, CFO. And I think it's interesting what you say about having um, it be one of the streams of income because that's I think a reason that people get into network marketing, but once they find their network marketing company, then they start making that the only, the only, or the only extra stream of income. So, but you wanted it to be more than, I mean, just one of the pie, one of your portfolio, essentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think a very smart tactic to do with your network marketing business for any entrepreneur is to look at this, say, okay, I can build this. I know how to build this. How can I build this and use this stream as an asset to build other things? Mm. You know, maybe that is real estate. Maybe that is more stocks. Maybe that is other interest, but think of it like that. It's going to turn your mind and it's going to make you think of your network marketing business as a true business that it is. So that's super interesting because there's a wave lately in the last year or so where people are like, oh my gosh. And I think, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame, not just because I'm biased, but I'm going to blame Instagram in a good way where people are realizing what you can become influencers or you can become bloggers or I mean, blogging has been going on for a long time, but I think people are starting to get it and go, wait, I don't have to be that exciting girl who lives in California or who more like the pioneer woman, I can do it where I am. And also technology making it easier. And so I talk to a lot of network marketers who are trying to figure out their thing, which is actually interesting because some people are dive in, but then what I'm also seeing, and we weren't talking about this at all today, but we are now. Um, I also see people who get stuck and paralyzed because they're like my thing, but my thing was my network marketing company. Who am I? And so there's that imposter complex that I think people are, are buying into that's hindering them from starting whatever that thing could be. Absolutely. You know, your thing, your thing is you and you are very many things. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about building your business, that is one of the things that you do and that you excel at. Because if you put that mindset on that you do, you will um, excel at it. You are not a company or a product. You know how I feel about that. That's right. You want 
you're distinctly and uniquely you. Absolutely. However, I think that the low barrier of entry to start a network marketing company lets people glom on to the coat strings or the coat, the coat tails of their company. And so they just become like, oh, that's my identity. I'm going to use it in my, my bio and it's going to be in my name on my social media and it's going to be everywhere. And then they decide, okay, that's me. Well, I got news for you. The creators of all these amazing network marketing companies, they don't need imposters out there. They don't need imposters. They actually need you to be you and happen to rep their business. It's a whole switch in concept from being a network marketer, which is which can be, if you do it the old school way, a glorified salesperson, or saying, hey, in this world where my brand actually has a market value, let me be Jennifer who reps X. Absolutely. Jennifer, you know, the, the whole thing they do now, like when, when celebs are collabing, where they have that like that X sign, like, so it's like J-Lo X, he, <laughs> he Australia, like you need to be you, keys up uh, not key this is Australia, but you and then x whatever your company absolutely absolutely and i think often um, when someone comes into network marketing um we we kind of lose our heads mm -hmm. there's a ton of excitement and that is good excitement is good and i would say if you encounter someone like that give them grace we've all been new at something before so give them grace um, but think of this, if some, if you're listening to this and you're new in network marketing, think of your network marketing business like a conventional business. You would never say, for instance, let's say that you are um, a bakery, right? You want to say, hi, I am Too Sweet Bakery. You want to, you would say, hi, I'm Jennifer. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I own this bakery called Too Sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is a part of what you do and you own that bakery and you're excited about it. Um, and so people are going to be excited to kind of hear your story and hear what this bakery is about. Um, and so we kind of have to flip that script and keep that on our mindset too. And I think also there's a lot of fear it, that people are like, I, I don't want to like become a brand or a, a company yeah, not. I'd say, but keep and going. when we have right absolutely absolutely and so when we know that no this is a business that you own and that is something that you do something that you own it's not you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's so good so I feel like by the end now just so you guys know we're recording this at the beginning of January beginning of 2020 so it's January 5th I think when we're recording this and maybe this has become like a mini like state of how to be a successful network marketer in 2020 or more like here's some changes some thoughts reversals that I that were good to go through um one being I like how I'm like now I'm classifying one being hey um Think about your business as an asset. Your business is an asset. So how do you think like a business person? Now, not everyone comes from the corporate world like you or I did. Um, not everyone even knows what that means to think, like, think of it like a business. In fact, one of the reasons they enjoyed getting into network marketing was because it was like a business in the box. So if someone's looked, listening to this and they were going, well, how do I do that? That sounds great, Jennifer. Okay, awesome. So step one, think of it as an asset. Um, and think of it like how do how do they do that, right? Or what I, where where would you recommend they get the skills to do that? Absolutely. You know, I think that mindset is huge, and you need to be pouring in to your mind every day. Your mind is a muscle, and so you need to grow with that every day. Um, some of my favorite things are personal development podcasts books and audio books. And every day you have to feed your brain, but also you have to guard your brain. You have to guard what you allow yourself to think. Because if you tell yourself that it won't work, you will find every single bit of evidence in your head that it won't work mm -hmm. yeah. and that you can't do it. You become a biased jury. Absolutely. It's one of the things that... I wholeheartedly coach 
with my team on about doing that. It's like, okay, here are systems that we implement, but we also have to have this mindset for success and how to go about doing that. So you're brand new in this business. Let's, I, let's pretend, I want to actually pause you because we keep talking about brand new, but I think most people who listen to this are not brand new. So very true. out of that rut of they already have all these blocks, how do we change that, par- that paradigm for them? Yeah. Um, okay. Ask me again, what part of the paradigm? Sorry. So, oh. so come at it as not someone who's new to network marketing, because I think it's easier for them to, to like dive into the 20 the 2020 and the new decade and how to um, go about this. But for someone who has been in the business, they're probably like "Mm, a few years in, they're not seeing a lot of movement and they are like, okay, I'm ready to, I'm listening to you. You want me to see as an asset, how the heck do we do, how do they do do that? Right. Okay. I'm going to use another story or example. All right. I want you for a moment to pretend that you are launching a new business and it has nothing to do with the structure or the organization of network marketing. Just for an example, I am going to throw out there that let's say you manufacture and you market produce tennis rackets. Okay. And so you're thinking, okay, I got to get the word out. I've got to get the word out that I am now, I have a company that we are producing these amazing tennis rackets that truly help with, you know, let's say uh, speed and accuracy. Well, your first thought would be, okay, who am I gonna be talking to? Who do I need to be sharing about these tennis rackets? And guess what? Everyone with two hands, they are not your target market. Okay, I'm going to pause you because this is what we're actually supposed to be talking about, but let's go back, um, hold the tennis thought. But okay, so what I heard you saying before was how do I think like a business person? Because even that concept you're giving us, if I don't know how to think like a business person, I don't think I do, is hard. Um, So I, you did kind of answer it. I did. So we'll go with that. It's like you said, you Pour into yourself, personal development, um, read books, audiobooks, podcasts, get that knowledge. We should be lifetime learners. We shouldn't feel like just because we finish school, whatever school we decided to end, that uh, that we stop at, that we are officially know everything. That's crazy to think that at that age, we knew everything or anything. Um, well, some things, <laughs> but not everything. So for someone who's not like you and didn't graduate to end from an MBA, you're saying that those skills are probably the best ways to get the info, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I wholeheartedly believe that. And so really embracing that and thinking, okay, what areas maybe am I weak on? What areas, you know, Brene Brown. I love her. Right. Who doesn't love good Brene Brown? And she speaks about leadership. If you're not familiar with Brene Brown, go pick up any one of her books, her audio books. Netflix show, so good. Yes. (laughs) Um, And I know that maybe some people listening to this, maybe they're thinking, well, I'm not a leader yet. I don't have a team. Guess what? This is where you're going to start to train your brain Yes, you are a leader because you are a business owner. Mm -hmm. And so you do lead. And that is very, very important to have that. So Brene Brown, amazing, great. I think there are some fabulous pearls to take out of Eric Worre's GoPro book. If you've never read that before, Mm -hmm. you know, that is also a really good one to start with. Okay, so the, I love those suggestions to Brene and Eric and kind of get into the business mindset. So one, you'd say that really network marketers in 2020 got to get into this, your, your business is an asset, um, but also is it's not you. You have this business in other businesses so or, or potentially other businesses. So my next question for you, and we will get to target market because you know that like I could talk about target market like 10 years from now. I'm so <laughs> But what 
for the person who wants to, who's been in, in network marketing for a while and is now hearing this, like, I need to have a brand. How do they figure out what the heck their brand is? How do you figure out what yours is? Let me put you on the hot spot. Right. Like, what is your brand? And yeah. I think that sometimes it's so easy to get paralyzed in that because then you're like, I don't know what my brand is. So I don't know who to talk to because I don't know what to talk to them about it because I got to have this like amazing, attractive brand that people are going to love and they're going to see and they're going to know. Um, you are your brand. You are your brand. What do you enjoy? What do you love doing? That is your brand. And honestly, the quicker that you can tap into that and truly talk to people, talk to your network, talk on your Instagram about what you do and why you do it in your life, that is your brand. Mm -hmm. One of the things that has nothing to do with my business, I love to make sourdough, all things sourdough, sourdough <laughs> bread, sourdough. Don't, don't talk to me about keto. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or low carbon. Yeah. Even. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that is one of the things that I love talking about. And that is part of my brand. Now, did I go out there and think, I bet I could have an angle with sourdough bread. Mm. That would be a sweet angle. No, any person would think that would be a crazy idea. But your brand is who you are and what you enjoy doing. Mm. And the more you share in a very authentic, transparent way about who you are, that is your brand. And you are not going to attract everyone. You are going to attract the people that connect with that. Now, don't go crazy and think, okay, well, I need to, I need to broaden this so that I can attract more other people. You go wrong there. Mm -hmm. Be you. Be you. I know, um, for instance, I have worked with a um, fitness and nutrition coach over this last year. It's been amazing. And it, I can sit and kind of look at her business model. I am probably not her target market, but yet she shares authentically. Her brand is very much a combination of who she is and I am still one of her clients, mm -hmm. even though I am probably not her precise target. Right, right. Oh. That you word again, I went there. I know, I know, I'm like, and you're back there, and we're back there. We will and we're back. back. No, but that, I, I think that's really good. And starting with, and, and let this be inspiration to people as well too, because you might be thinking, I need to be, I need something new. Like I need to do what Ellen's doing or, or what Oprah did and is still doing and uh, how do I do this? Or even what Rachel Hollis is doing. And I want people to remember, they all did, they, none of them started where they are right now. None of them did. No. I mean, Rachel was doing a, a food blog. She doesn't do a food blog anymore. Oh. But so she started with something that was unique and passionate to her. Ellen was a comedian. We forget that. You know, we forget that Ellen had a TV show. I mean, we forget all this. And I don't mean her talk show. She was on the show, Ellen, um, that actually got ca canceled after she came out and was like, this is who I authentically am. So it, I think we forget that people came from different places and you don't just wake up like this. No one just woke Cardi B didn't just wake up like that. She even has a story of how she got there. Um, it's an interesting one, but it's one still. So I think that we've got to remember, Jayla was a fly girl on In Living Color, which most people don't know what In Living Color was. So you got to start somewhere and do something you're passionate about first. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, talking about your brand, when we're talking about on social media, your brand is who you are. And so you're not going to go try to change who you are. Yeah. Are we aspiring to be a better version of ourselves? Yes, every day we should be. But that's not your brand. Your brand is who you are. Another leader, Kitty Wood, once said, you've got to be bad before you're good and good before you're great. We are so afraid to embrace that. We lose our focal point. We don't do a darn thing. We yeah. are walking in the dark. 
be, I can't tell you how many people tell me all the time they're going to start a podcast. And I'm like, yes, do it. And I'm still waiting to support their first podcast. If you're going to do a podcast, just do the dang podcast. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have a perfect mic. Just get your message out there. Everybody loves seeing the initial videos or the back, you know, where was she then? And you're like, the person's like in a hole, but they were doing their thing. Do that and do it authentically your way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I can even see that in things that I've done. Um, but here's the thing really, um, and I, I believe I saw Rachel Hollis did this on a podcast recently or YouTube where she said, my hope for you is to fail this year. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're not failing, you're not trying. And one of the things that I'm coaching, do coach my team on is fail fast. Fail fast. Rip, over, rip the bandaid off. <laughs> rip that off. Um, fail fast. Go all in. Of course, when you're looking at new ideas, there is a level where you have to realize that, okay, I can't just try something once and decide that it was a failure, mm -hmm. but it's when we mull on, for instance, the example of starting a podcast. We mull on it forever and ever, and we think about it, we get it ready, and we practice, and we practice intros, and we mull, and we mull, and we mull, uh, and we never start. Yeah, yeah. Instead, fail fast. Get it out there. Fail fast, because you do have to be bad before you're good and good before you're great with anything and everything that you do and you're gonna excel in. That's fantastic. Okay, so the first thing we have, just to recap, is um, think about your business as an asset. You are a business person. And if you don't know how to do that, that's okay, because you're gonna fail fast. And you're gonna get up and you're gonna read and listen to different business-minded things to help you get there. Um, number two is figure out your dang brand already. You have one, ask your friends, ask your family. If you're like, Hey, what do you, what am I to go to for? What do you know that I'm always your person for? Uh, my friend, Tanya, who's been on the podcast list several times, whenever I say beauty product, I, I reach out to her. I'm like, do you like this one? Do you like this makeup? Do you like this? Like, I don't, I don't purchase it. And I'm just like, she's my go-to. Well, she knows that. And she has her, like, she has figured out her distinct brand and she's living in that truth. And it's amazing. So figure out what that is. And don't feel like it has to be associated to what network marketing company you're in. Because again, that is a asset. That is something that you also offer. It's not your thing. Now, the third thing, and I know a lot of this is like, oh, uh, brain swimming, but we're going to dive into it just a little bit, um, is, <laughs> you know, I love your good old target market, <laughs> y'all. And I love that Jennifer and I are going to talk about this because here's the thing, and you know how I feel about this. Your target market is not everyone with the ability to drink wine or everyone who, so everyone over 21 or your target market is not everyone with skin. It's not everyone who needs a supplement it is not everyone who's breathing. Your target market is not everyone. And I'm glad we actually took a moment to get here, Jennifer, because in my opinion, I think it's, re it gave it, the listeners an opportunity to start thinking things differently and go, oh, okay, that feels different. That feels different. So now we're going into it. And this is going to be the biggest, in my opinion, counterculture thing we're talking about today, because you probably had an upline who've to who's told you when you're getting into the business that it's everyone. Absolutely. So when we get into our business and you know what, I made this mistake too, guys, I made this mistakes too. So we've all been there. And we kind of, we are super, super excited about our, um, about our, is this one of your five? Yes, it is. This <laughs> <laughs> happens at different times. Sometimes she's got three on when I'm talking to her. So. Right? <laughs> okay. So if, you, if you're listening, she just like reached down and was out of the, the camera shot. I'm like, okay, there must be, there must be a child of foot. <laughs> That was number four. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so when, um, when we start, we are excited and it is good to be excited. Take that excitement and do run with it. Feed your mind the right things. Be listening to the right people like this podcast right here. Um, and you need to have a system in place. Part of that system um, is thinking about truly who is my target market? 
So I'm going to go back again to this tennis example. I think this is a good time for it. Yeah, right? you bring it, you're allowed to bring the tennis example okay. out, I'm of, to bring this back yeah, in. out of the penalty box or whatever. So, Do you have one for the tennis? Probably not. Keep going. You are launching a new business and just for the sake of keeping things relative, um, it's, it's going to be an online company. Okay. You don't have a brick and mortar store. Um, and it is manufacturing tennis rackets that you are selling to the general public. Okay. So you are thinking in your mind, all right, I've got these amazing tennis rackets. How do I get them out? Okay. Well, guess what? You know, you probably know as this business owner, uh, owner who's starting this new venture that, hmm, my tennis rackets, they are probably not for everyone with two hands. <laughs> okay. You mean common sense. You mean actually using your brain. Keep going. Right. <laughs> right. Like, I could try to market my tennis rackets to every single person with two hands. But oh my goodness, think how much money I would waste. And time. Advertising right? Because we're kind of thinking conventional business here mm -hmm. and time and frustration. No, you would start talking to people who play tennis. That's great. Of course you would. That would be your target market. And then depending on your racket, you'd probably go even more specifically into that target market. Now, are you going to have outliers? Meaning are you going to have people that have never played tennis before, but they get really excited about your tennis rackets and they decide to kind of pick up the sport and start playing around with it? Of course you will. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Very cool. Just like with um, the fitness and nutrition coach that I worked with, I was kind of an outlier for him. Loved it. Loved it. So um, yeah. What you're, sorry to interrupt you. So I think what you're saying, and maybe this is a way to like wrap people's brains around it. I'm going to use the word I hate. Um, busy. I hate that word because everyone's busy. And I love using it with you, like laughing about it because you get told all the time I'm busy. And I'm like, okay, she has five kids. <laughs> and she, and you homeschool your kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is important, which means she's like with her kids and she gets it all done. She's a C. I mean, I just love love your story in general and like your counterculture in so many ways in a good ways like oh my gosh she's the mba was a cfo and yeah i'm going down a bunny trouble what i was going to say is this um maybe if we look at it like this if you think you're really busy then why not use your time to really target a warm market that's probably going to buy your tennis rackets or your actual product maybe that's the thought process that will get people out of this everyone mindset. absolutely um, I'm going to actually come back to your bunny trail because I have a, a really good tip, hopefully for some other business owners. Yes, I'm talking about you who are in MLM. Um, I'm going to come back to that. But talking about your tennis rackets, would you tell your friends and family about your new venture? Of course you would, right? Mm -hmm. You're excited about it. A, it is a part of what you're doing, right? But you're not going to stop there or you're not going to tell your great aunt Ida over and over and over and over again that she <laughs> needs to buy your tennis racket when she has no zero interest. When in she it. doesn't actually play tennis and hates tennis. Right? Why would you do that? You would never why do you, that. Why did you why do that to yourself? Why do people like, I, and I get it, you join a network marketing company and they say, if you're coachable, You'll do well at this. And so the, so the word coachable, you hear that in your head and you're like, well, I gotta do this because she said, I'm coachable and I've got to show I'm coachable. So I'm going to keep talking to these people who don't care about what I have. Um, it's a shotgun approach. It is. It's a shotgun approach. It is. And it's, um, I mean, it's one of the reasons that network marketing gets a bad rap. Let's be real. Absolutely. And I also, when you position yourself, when you align yourself of, what is happening today, 2020 and beyond, the people who understand a target market, they are going to be able to drill down onto an online system. And I'm all about an online system to truly attract the right 
people for your product. And so as much as maybe you want to disagree with what we are saying, <laughs> our product is not for everyone. Right. For instance, let's say that you have a, um, let's go to a, um, let's go to a fitness, a fitness, um, fitness MLM. Okay. Guess what? Some people don't care at all, like at all about fitness. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. That's not your target market. Mm -hmm. That is not your target market. So the quicker that you can truly narrow in on who you are talking to, who you want to serve, because that's what you're doing as a business owner. It's who you want to serve the quicker that you are going to attract to them. Because when you try to truly um, be attractive to everyone, you will be attractive to no one. one. It seems like a cliche, but it's so true. I mean, would you, if you sell meat products, would you sell your meat products to a vegan and keep trying to make a vegan see it? No. Like the horror, we would not, like, but that's <laughs> what we're that's what you do when you don't figure out your target market. Um, you know, when I teach my lead generation workshop and a new, new program, I just started the lead generation creation because I realized that my members needed more, like they got it, but they still need to be given the steps to drill it down because it just doesn't feel right to do that. I encourage them, like, get so specific. Get, like, know her name, know her age, know everything about her. Not an age range, but an actual age. Where does she shop? Those things are so important so that you have a really good take on it. But I think back to what my radio days and, and talking to my, the advertising, you know, sales and radio is everything. So you have this huge sales team. And it was interesting when they would come to me with um, companies to endorse because I, I would sit, sit in on meetings um, and listen to the way they went about marketing. And if you need, like, if you ever want to learn about marketing, find someone who sells ads. Oh my gosh. Um, they're resilient and they've, they've got it, but they would encourage people like, what's your, but they, A, they had no problem asking about money. What's your budget? Okay. And lots of female ads sales. So then the second thing they, based on the budget, they'd know what's your target market. And if they didn't, if the company didn't know the target market, they'd help them figure that out. So they would say, listen, you don't need to be on the morning show because your budget is, does not lend itself to the morning show, but they knew the demographics of the channel so well that they would say, okay, if you're targeting these people, these people are listening to the radio at this time. You can get in and at a lower price at a, a time. And, and yes, you're not going to be marketing to millions, but you're going to be marketing to the hundreds of thousands of thousands that want to hear your message. It's the same thing when you watch, um, I love, I love the day show. The ads right before the day show are totally different than the ads for the day show. Yes, it's probably exciting for business to be like, I it was a commercial, a national commercial. But if you actually don't sell nationwide, save your money, get on the show right before that. So you're spending less and you're targeting the right people. It's the same thing with your time. Network marketing, a lot of network marketers don't spend money, but you spend time. If you think that time is not money, time is more valuable than money. So how can you use your time wisely to, and make sure that you're targeting the people you want to be targeting? Absolutely. I think that so many people do come to network marketing for the time freedom, mm -hmm. right? They use that, like we said, like an asset, you know, this is a business. And if you think of this like an asset, I think also that helps you so that you don't become a company, a product, a bottle, a shake, whatever the things are, you don't become that. It is a part of what you do. And so truly when you have that mindset, then that really does kind of help guide you on who you are talking to because it's who you are serving. And um, when you can talk to that person on who you're serving and how you're serving them, guess what? your products are going to benefit them. There are so many amazing products in the MLM space, but every single product is not for every single person. 
And that is okay. That is good. That is good for business because the sooner you find that um, and understand that, the better that you are going to be at really talking, talking to your person. Talk to her, her. Yes, absolutely. I love this. We're going long, so I have to wrap it up and I don't yeah. want to because I want to talk to you forever. Um, but I love what we're hearing here. It's almost like you need to put on those earmuffs. So like put on the earmuffs, listen to your company and your upline when it makes sense. But when it doesn't make common sense, do the whole earmuffs thing and really think it through. Think about how you can, because I'll tell you right now, and Jennifer, you've said it, the people who figure this out in 2020 and beyond are the people who are going to be successful and who are going to make that turn. So one, think about your business as an asset. Absolutely. Um, and use it and get the skills if you don't have them. Two, think about yourself as a brand because you are a brand. Yeah. And three, based on those things, this will help you um, realize that your product that you are offering and even your brand is not for everyone and that is okay. So figure out who it's for and then move forth with that. This has been fantastic. And you know, I can talk to you for you know, hours, hours. Um, is there any last things you want to share before we, we, you know, um, you brought up a really, really good point. And I just thought this would be a really great tip because I switched the story that I was telling myself. And it really was a big pivotal point when we talked about being busy. Mm -hmm. And so if you are in network marketing, listening to this, or, Ooh, you know what? Yeah. we're going to go to a quick commercial break. Yeah, let's do it. You know, I have a good idea, Jennifer. Why don't I keep you on? I've never done this before, but why don't I keep you on for the mindset minute? Cause I think this is going to go right. Oh, now. this is going to be perfect. You can do the mindset minute and then we'll do the tech tip too. Okay, perfect. All right. We'll be right back. We're back with Jennifer Nguyen Schwander, and for the first time ever, I'm inviting my guests to stick around for the Mindset Minute, because I think, I know whatever she's about to say, even though I don't know what it is, is going to be very valuable. So Jennifer, take it away and give us her Mindset Moment. Well, I am so excited to be honored to share the Mindset Minute, and this was something that I was doing wrong several years ago, and I had a shift and it completely changed and it started in my verbiage. We hear in this day and age, the B word. And I am talking about the busy word. Guess what? Every single person on earth is busy. Every single moment of their day is filled with something. My one-year-old, she is very, very busy. <laughs> I am very, very busy, but when you have this mindset that I am just so busy, I realize I'm going to ruffle some feathers here, but in that language, honestly, that is very much arrogance speaking, even if you don't mean it, that's how it comes out. When you tell someone, oh, I'm just so busy. That is saying that my life is busier than your life and I am so much more important than yours. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself this question. Do you want to be thought of as busy or productive? Because that's two different things. I personally want to be thought of as productive not as she's just so busy because everyone is busy. So I would challenge you to remove the word busy from your language immediately. Mm -hmm. You are never ever allowed to say, I'm just so busy. I'm just too busy. Because when you do that, you tell yourself that, you know what? I just can't make my business work. I just can't make maybe my fitness routine work. My, maybe my morning routine. I just, I just can't make it work. You can say, I have a very full plate right now. You can say that, but you have to take out the word. I am just too busy 
because that mindset is giving yourself that out on why you're not accomplishing the things that you really want to do. Remove it from yourself and that way you can truly focus on what you're going to fill your time with to be productive and not busy. Preach, mic drop. We'll leave it at that. We'll be right back with the tech tip. All right, we are back one more time with Jennifer New and Schwander. Um, and Jennifer, I wanted to talk to you about tech tip. Every, every, every episode, I like to give people, network marketers, a little tech tip that can help them be more efficient, more productive um, in their lives. What is something that you do or you teach to your, your large team on how to be, how to use that tech? Absolutely. So especially going forward, and when we are talking about, guys, this industry is changing in 2020, and this is not a business that is stuck in the 1980s and 90s. Going forward, your online systems are really important. And here is one very small tech tip that is free to use. It takes moments to set it up, and it's going to save you a ton of frustration and that is simply using an online scheduler. Mm -hmm. Calendly is one of them that is free and so what you can do is you can use Calendly and you can set in times of availability so that when you do need to speak to someone on the phone or via Zoom they can go and schedule it because how many times have you been working with someone you have the appointment, they say, oh, okay, I've got to check on this and I need to get back with so-and-so, but yeah, I think I can do that, but, but I'm not sure. And then meantime, you have someone else come in and take that spot. And then they come back and you're like, oh yeah, that's going to work. And then you're like, well, well, so-and-so just said that she wanted that. Or even worse, you cancel plans because someone said they thought they could schedule this time. This way, you send them a link to your calendar, they plug in when they are going to be there on your calendar, you get the notification on your phone that they are scheduled for that time and it's in there, boom, it's done. You are gonna save yourself so much time in the back and forth, it's easy for them, it's easy for you, it's an online system that can be duplicated and you need to start using it today. Amen. I, I love my system that I use because it gives me sanity. So I'm with you. Like, it, I think it also allows you to be professional. Um, a business needs to have those, professionals, those professional tools in there. And if you're able to say to someone, hey, let's schedule it. What, the one thing I would say is I, I'm always cognizant about not saying like, oh, well, here's my calendar. As in like, I'm so important that I have a calendar. And I think that's one of the things that probably stops people from doing it. Think about it this way. And this is how I always pose it. If I'm talking like someone wants an I, uh, Instagram con consultation, we could go back and forth. Like you said about scheduling it. I say, I say to them, great, look at your calendar and then here's a link. So you can figure out when it fits best for you and accommodates you because that's really what it's about. It makes it easier for them and they can just pick their time and be done with it. But it also gives the functionality, like you said, I mean, I use Acuity, but I love the functionality of, I know that when a certain meeting is scheduled, it already gives them the link to Zoom, if you do use Zoom, um, and so it's automatically there. It gives them reminders. It sends them the reminders. So I know they were been reminded about the meeting. If they don't show, I know they're reminded. That's on them. And it even will change time zones and things so that you can, so it can tell them where they can set their time zone and you can set yours because that's a big thing in Absolutely. the world today. So that is such a good example of truly utilizing what we have in today's day and day and age to work our business smart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally worth it. Thank you for that. And thank you for being a guest on rocks talks. So many great nuggets. I appreciate you so much. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you again in the future because I know you've got some things uh, coming, but we're not going to talk about them yet because I'll let you have them come before we reveal. Sound good? I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Have a great one.
So I just got through the content creation. It was the bomb. So good, girl. Um, I just literally got my content down for the next four, six weeks. Easy. And here's the thing is I am excited. I am excited about what I am writing because it's a part of my brand. It's who I am. And it's things that honestly I get excited talking about. There is variation in it and it is different aspects of my life that I know that my niche is really going to appreciate and enjoy. So your masterclass, girl, it was amazing. I am coaching it to my team tomorrow because it was that good. And I have listened to other content creation classes that I have paid money for. Uh, this was spot on. And I was like, you know what? Every single first of the month, I can do this, map out my month. And then in my mind, once you get those juices flowing, I literally was taking down the Christmas tree and I had my notepad, see my, my different <laughs> categories. And I was like, oh, there's one there. Oh, I remember that picture that I took. Oh, there's one there. Boom. It was like juices were flowing. It was spot on, girl. So good. You made my day. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, every episode, I kind of tell you where I am in my business and how things are going. Um, and at the time this is recording, it's the fifth, the five day Instagram stories challenge starts tomorrow. I was bold and brave enough to tell you that my goal was to have a thousand people in the challenge. I am not there yet. I am not there yet. And I don't know if I'm going to get there. And I'll just full disclosure kind of bummed me out. Now the holidays, I wasn't worried about it, but the traction, the numbers aren't coming in as quickly as I would like them to. And I'm just like, er, so I had to like give myself a little gut check this morning and go Roxanne, but why are you doing this? What is making you happy? What's making me happy is interacting with the people who are in the challenge already and um, imparting on them wisdom and knowledge because I pop things in unexpected. Like I, you know, you got to delight and surprise. So even though the challenge starts on Monday, I've been giving them nuggets and things that have beneficial to them over the last week and seeing their transformation that's already happening. That's my happy place. So it really doesn't matter. Yes. On a goal state space, you want to have a certain number, but what feeds me is the, is the transformations I'm able to assist in getting people to. That being said, I'm not going to go into numbers. Next week, I'll let you know how it's played out, how many people were in the challenge and kind of go from there. And next week, I'll be done with the challenge and in the middle of the cart um, for new members for, for social stories. So we'll see. But I, I do have to tell you, it was nice to just get a little framework and go, wait, Roxanne, you are not ahead you're not behind I'm exactly where I need to be and as a result I shan't be upset now I will learn from this um, but we can't call it a failure yet because it's not done yet and even in a fail we use that word like it's a negative word we do a lot of learning and growth and so I'm ready for that all right that's all we have for for this week can't wait to see you next week oh my goodness the that it just gets better and better and better. And what's already has come has been amazing. So thank you for your feedback as well, too. I'm loving getting emails from you, um, getting messages on just how much you've learned, how much this has helped you. That's, that's why I do it. But thank you for being part of the community. If you would like to subscribe, subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. So you get the downloads, you get the updates every Wednesday when a new episode comes out. Um, typically comes out 8 a.m. Pacific time, just in case you're wondering. But also, uh, don't hesitate to head over to Rock's Talks podcast to get any of extra background or any information that you might want on things. And of course, you go to socialstoriesmembership.com, my network marketers. There are actually two free new goodies on there that I think you're going to love. There's one from um, last week that we talked about, which is that list of my go-to social media apps you can get there. You can also get, dun, 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 and I'll put it on the podcast page as well too, but starting now, um, the convention, how to do convention right. 
in social media because <laughs> a lot of times it's done wrong a lot. And so I give you the how to, you know, get, get this. You're going to get not only storyboards from the queen of storyboards myself for your Instagram stories while you're in, at convention, but you also are getting um, two, two training sessions, video training sessions on demand. And the whole thing is free. Yes, it is. Go to rockstalkspodcast.com. I know that some of you are, have a, a uh, convention coming up this month. So I want you to be ready and equipped. Shout out to the Scott, Scott and Zeller listeners. Okay, take care.